and what unadulterated joy this win will have triggered back home in Uganda. One of the friendliest, most beautiful countries you could ever wish to visit. Like I said, you definitely know that voice. Welcome back. You're still watching NTV Sport Nights. The gentleman with unparalleled enthusiasm and energy. And I have to present a rose to him too. Oh, thank you, Mabel. You have just made my day. Not only am I in love with Uganda, I now take home a memento for Valentine's Day. But I'll have to tell my wife you gave it to me. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> Absolutely okay. Absolutely okay. Rob Walker, welcome to Uganda from State House to Kapchora, and you were just telling us you were down in southwestern Uganda windy. with a windy, yeah, with the gorillas, mountain gorillas. Yes, I mean, like most Mazungu, when I first came to Uganda, I was doing so on an overland tour, so I was experiencing Kampala and then Ginger for the whitewater rafting, a few Nile specials, which occasionally crept into my commentary oh, yeah. for Tokyo. <laughs> but on this trip, I have got a much better flavour of the landscapes, the different dialects, the different types of people. It's been absolutely incredible. I still, until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, I've still yet to do a week. And yet I have travelled the length and breadth of the country. And I'm probably even more in love with the Pearl than I was before this trip started. Wow. Yeah, and I, I, there's a quote. You're, you were talking about more flowers from the Pearl of Africa. Without any question, I think you're in a very, very strong position at the moment. It's not just the isolated great medal winning count from Tokyo. In Joshua and Jacob, mm. you have two once in a generation athletes who both happen to have come along at the same time. So you've got training camps popping up at Capchora, which are doing brilliantly. You might never, or it might take a very long time, for you to have two guys or two women of this quality side by side at exactly the same time. And every time those guys are front and centre at a major championship where I'm commentating, that vest is on display. Yeah. And it gives the commentator, whoever that may be, in, in the case of Tokyo, it was myself. And even in the case of Birmingham too. Yes, as well. Brilliant double. Brilliant double by, by, by Jacob. Jacob. Brilliant. But it gives that commentator an excuse to talk about Uganda. It is your window to the world, and now is your time, not only for your athletes to shine, but for your country to shine. So, so, so Rob, um, and uh, I have the privilege of meeting you before these guys did, because... We met in Birmingham last year during the Commonwealth Games. How does this trip come about? Because you've been here before for the rafting and all these other things, <clears throat> and uh, for the drink at sunset. So how does this trip come around? Because I've seen the executive director of Uganda Tourist Tourism Board, uh, Dr. Liliana Jarova, with us here and, and everything. So how then do you return in this? Well, I've, I've come back as a, as a guest oh. of the country, um, <clears throat> and I was really really humbled by the extent of the gratitude I was shown for the nice things I said but I didn't say those things about Uganda with any agenda mm -hmm. I, I simply spoke as I felt and mm -hmm. I'm sure the three of you yeah. have certain styles of commentary that you like listening to and certain styles you don't I very much believe that your instinct takes over and I've never been paid to say anything specific about Uganda so what I said off the top of my head hmm. was what I meant, that yeah. Uganda is one of the friendliest, most beautiful countries I've ever been. Yeah. And I knew, even from a neutral's perspective, because when you're commentating as a world feed, yeah. you have to be excited by the story. Yeah. The story might be a Kenyan winning, the story might be a Ugandan winning. But there was great intrigue about Cheptegei and Kiplimo, and the fact that I have been to the country and got a tiny, tiny sliver of a flavour mm. of what the place is like and how warm the people are, mm. I was allowed to get excited. So mm. I would, I've been invited back a, as a guest of the country and if I can play a very small role in helping to promote Uganda mm. to you know a, a, a potential audience of Muzungu who've never experienced the Pearl, who may not have been to the African continent before, if them listening to me talking about how comfortable I feel here and how much I like the people and how much of an affinity I feel with the country, if that means that only 
10 Mzungu families suddenly decide to come and visit Uganda, that makes a difference because I think you only have to get people here once and they will come back again yeah. and again and again. <laughs> you just need to get them over that first hurdle. So that's why I'm here. I, 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 want, I want to create a link before Andrew comes in yeah. uh, between sports and tourism because that's something we are grappling. I know it's what it's what uh, the ED of U Uganda Tourism Board, Lillian, must be grappling with. How do mm. you link sport and tourism? Uh, is, is there a symbiosis that you sense in your job that these are supposed to work together every time? I think it happens naturally over the world. It's one of the most inclusive, easiest sports to pick up. Pair of trainers, right, you can run a marathon with a little bit of gumption and a training plan. Probably a training plan half as good as the one that took you to 240 plus Ks, <laughs> uh, which is a great achievement, by the way. Thank you. So, in the not too distant future, you might have sports tourists coming to Uganda, not necessarily because they think they're going to meet Joshua or Jacob or Perth Chemetai, mm. who we shouldn't forget is a big part of the success sure. from Tokyo, Uganda's first female Olympic champion. Mm. What, a, what a win for the sisters that was. Um, but they might come just so they can say they have run in Uganda. I did a 10K at Murchison Falls um, wow. a couple of days ago. And I was just going, oh, you're tia, high-fiving the kids. <laughs> I made a couple of babies cry because I went, Mzungu power! And I was messing around. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not like most Mzungu. I'm quite kind of demonstrative. But it was brilliant just to be out in the fresh air. It was boiling hot. But it was so good to just be out and to think, these are the kind of roads that Joshua runs on. These are the kind of roads that Jacob runs on. And these are the kind of roads that the next Ugandan champion that I will have the chance, hopefully, to commentate on, they're the roads that they're going to follow. So I think because you've got such an iconic figure in Joshua, mm. sport and tourism are already intrinsically linked, and that bond will only get closer as the years go on. Mm. Uh, uh, listening to you here and in the commentary, I'm almost, you know, gobsmacked by the enthusiasm. Like, it's, yeah. it's infectious. Yeah. And, and one listening would be like, okay, just when did he pick that up? Okay, he's been to Uganda before. When was that? What attracted you, endeared you to the country so much that you speak about it like you are paid to? <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I would like to clarify, I'm yeah. not, because it's would, really... It's would you want to be paid? Andrew no. wants to offer you a check. <laughs> no. He can buy me a Nile special. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. We'll take sure. off. But no, I don't, I don't ever want to be paid for promoting Uganda, yeah. because then there's no hand up my back. Mm -hmm. then, yeah. then people can trust that what I say, I say because I believe and I say because I'm passionate. Sure. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a fan of distance running and, and, and the 1500 meters specifically. I, I was woken up in the middle of the night by my mum to watch the 1500 meter final from LA where we had Sebco who was the defending Olympic champion yeah. against Steve Cram who was the reigning world champion, champion because yeah. he'd won the inaugural world Great in Helsinki that. with the tiniest flag in celebration. He yeah. still gets the mickey taken out of him for yeah. that. Yeah. So I, I watched LA in 84. And I already knew that I loved the feeling of running. I was nine at the time, and that's never left me. One of my highlights of this trip, and I've done the Gorillas and, and uh, uh, met up with Joshua, and I've done Murchison Falls. Mm -hmm. I already know that one of my best memories of this trip will be that 10K run when I went out and, and high fived a load of kids. Mm -hmm. So I grew up loving distance running. Mm -hmm. And if you're a fan of the history of our sport, the success of the African athletes is intrinsically linked to distance running, dating back to Abiba Bakila, who was the first black African yeah. to win an Olympic gold medal yeah. mm -hmm. when he kicked off his shoes and finished under the spotlight in yeah. Rome and then successfully defended the title in Tokyo, mm -hmm. finishing, by the way, so far ahead of the second-placed athlete that he was doing his warm-down before the <laughs> silver medalist ever yeah, entered right. the stadium. Yeah. So I always wanted to go to the land of runners, and I've always been fascinated therefore by the African continent. I'd been to Kenya and Ethiopia in 2003 to make a documentary about the rivalry between the two great distance running nations oh. separated by the vast Rift Valley. Mm -hmm. When it came to 2005 I was involved in a charity project oh. to try and bring young British people to the African continent who wouldn't otherwise necessarily have been able to afford it. Oh. So I had a, I, I organized some fundraising events and I took them on an overland tour. I contacted the people through whom I booked it, and I didn't know anything about Uganda. 
I didn't dislike it or like it. I just didn't know anything about Uganda. Mm. And they said, oh, on this trip that you've paid for, we spend half the time in Kenya and half the time in Uganda. I said, okay, cool. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds good. Uh, uh, you know, Relative. brilliant. Mm. Your biggest asset, in my opinion, Gorillas is great, Murchison's great, the mountains, fabulous. The biggest asset you have in this country is the people. Because it doesn't matter what landscape you encounter. If you're made to feel welcome, if you're made to feel one of their own, you will want to go back to that place. And I'm sure the three of you are very successful and you've well, you're well travelled and you've probably been to many countries around the world and you've got your favourite tourist destinations. Mm. This place is very special because of the people who live here. I, I've, never, I've never gone, Oyo tia! and had a scowl. <laughs> yeah. I've always said, who is this crazy Mazungu saying hello, <laughs> say hello back? So this is a very, very, very special place. And I just fell in love with it instinctively in 05 because I am quite gregarious and, and I think Ugandans are generally quite excitable and I think they like seeing that in a Mazungu. So that's where it started. And every time I returned, 05, 6, 7, 8, 9, 13 and 16, I, I think this is my eighth or ninth, I've lost count. Uh, I just loved it when I came back mm. and I could sense as Joshua began to emerge as a global threat, I could sense how important his achievements might turn out to be for the country yeah. to help perhaps change or modernise outdated stereotyped yeah. views of this country mm -hmm. that should long have been forgotten. Yeah. 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 And yes. just, just as a follow-up, you've met, of course, you've met the athletes, visited the places, uh, government invited you. You uh, met the president. Sp speaking yeah. to the president, speaking to the government and policymakers, what sense do you get regarding their genuine interest in, 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 in making sure that actually what we want uh, comes to fruition? For example, Kapchorwa first talked about in 2010, 2023 now. The, the high altitude, high altitude so, training center. So, if, if the enthusiasm of the people was supplemented by the enthusiasm of the government or the policymakers, perhaps that altitude should be yeah, done by now. Yeah, I, I'll so, just maybe to help Rob with background. In mm -hmm. 2010, Moses yeah. Kipsil, probably one of the best. Brilliant athlete. athlete. I'm brilliant glad athlete. you yeah. mentioned him because yes. he often gets forgotten now. Yeah. 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 I, I don't. Yeah. I, I, don't <laughs> I don't. I love him. I love him personally. Mm -hmm. Moses Kipsil goes to India for the Commonwealth Games. Wins at five and ten, five and ten thousand. I yeah. was there. It was amazing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Then he goes and meets the president. The president makes a commitment. Moses Kipsiro was asked about. The president asked him, "What do you want to get as a gift?" Mm -hmm. And he said, "There are so many Moses Kipsiros like me. So what you can do for us is build a build a training center mm -hmm. where I come from in Buko, and that would help so many of the athletes, the young boys. And that was his gift. Of course, the president did not follow up. Then two years later, <laughs> 2012. Stephen Kiprotich goes and wins that gold in the marathon Amazing. in London. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he so was, when Moses was there, Kipsiro, he reminded Kiprotich to make the same demand and he made the same demand. That's when the president mm -hmm. eventually said, we are going to build it. It's now 11 years. But, but what I saw up there yeah. looked really impressive. I ran Now the we've, moved, we've moved a bit, but still... It should be it's done. It's taken us 11 years to so get there. That's the thing. What do, <laughs> it's taken us 11 years to get where you saw. Yeah. So what do you sense when you meet the policymakers? The, you had a chance to meet the president. Uh, I haven't had that chance. <laughs> Yeah. I have met him in groups one, <laughs> twice or thrice. Do, do you see your energy being reciprocated? Do you see Zero. that perhaps now they might, you know, you we met can the minister, expedite the process? You've met the Speaker of Parliament. I've met, I have met an incredible number of people. And yeah. it, it's been, other than the birth of my son and, and my, my marriage to my wife, who, who will probably never forgive me that you've given me a rose, <laughs> Mabel, but I'll deal with that cyclone when I get home mm. on Wednesday night. Mm. Um, this has been incredible. Uh, the overriding word that springs to mind is pride. Mm -hmm. It's not my place to comment on specific politics here mm -hmm. yeah. as to why certain money has or hasn't been made available. But there's a little phrase that's popping into my head. Mm. Rome wasn't built in a day, uh -huh. sure. and mighty oaks out of acorns do grow. Mm. It's coming, it's mm. getting there. You're off the back of your most successful Olympic yeah. campaign to date. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. What I saw... Mm. Up at Capture was brilliant, and I can see that uh, Joshua was halfway through completing another separate training facility as well. Sure, you've got a great track up there. I ran a lap of it. 
the overriding sense that I got from all the dignitaries that I've had the chance to meet mm. is pride. Mm. Uh, the president asked me to ask him a question mm. when I was sitting there, and I've never met a head of state before. I mean, why would I? I'm just a Mazungu commentator. <laughs> and I said, Your Excellency, may I ask? And it just popped, popped out off the mm. top of my head, as most commentary should do. I said, may I ask what makes you most proud about your country? Mm -hmm. I don't know why I said that. It just came to me on the spot. And he said, the people. I love these people. So, look, there are obviously complexities here that are way above my pay grade. But what I would say is <laughs> the, the training centre that I personally witnessed looks great. There were some beautiful trails leading up to an accommodation block that we didn't have time to go and see. Mm. I think what's going to happen in the near future more and more international teams uh -huh, yeah. are going to want to come and base themselves here in Uganda ahead of a major championship because the Kenyans have already cornered the market mm. in that but you've got a facility mm. that's equal to that and you've got great people as well and you've got the likes of Joshua and Jacob reminding people that Uganda has now joined what is now a triumvirate of distance running excellence. Mm. It's not just the Kenyans, it's not just the Ethiopians, the Ugandans are at the party. None of it's going to happen overnight. And there are clearly things that still need to be finished. Mm. But I think you should be really proud of what's been done up to now. Very. And I think you should be very excited about the future. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I'm, I, I think I'm satisfied with your answer on that. Uh, but before we, act, uh, we hand over back to that beautiful lady because she's there signaling to us. Uh, talking of athletes, there's a tweet You'll confirm if it's you who tweeted. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's from your verified account about you putting it to some two companies, one of them the, the manufacturer of your favorite drink and, mm. <laughs> and MTN, are calling on them to join forces and you actually unearth the next big young commentator. Yes. And would love to know more about that and then perhaps you'll leave the advice for anyone who wants to be a commentator. Okay. What's the trick? Do you need, are we okay for time? Yes, Can I explain? Yes, 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 yes. please. <laughs> okay. I just came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I appreciate the invite and, and I've been taken to some beautiful places and I've been thinking about uh, how I can continue to try and put back in. Mm -hmm. And the idea just occurred to me, because I now have a little bit of a profile in Uganda, mm -hmm. I might be in a position to try and help find and encourage others to fund a new commentator. So what I want to do is run a competition. Mm. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, and if this is already happening in Uganda by someone else, then I'll step back and let them get on with it. But I think the fact that I'm attached to this idea might encourage companies to get involved, because I seem to be getting literally hundreds and hundreds of replies to every tweet I've posted. So the idea is, let's give someone out there a chance to become a great commentator boy or girl young man young woman whatever so all we need to do this is so simple a young commentator's wages for one year let's call it a scholarship whatever that figure is i'm not sure because i don't live here so we come up with that figure whatever it may be we create a platform on which potential commentators could upload their work <laughs> i would perhaps head a shortlist head a panelist We'd have a couple of other panelists, maybe Joshua if he wasn't too busy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good tip. Thank you very much. And I'm thinking, how do I come back from that? Well, reminding you of our head-to-head, -head, we have Louis Nani uh, versus Ricardo Caresmo. Caresmo. <laughs> uh, they're both Portuguese. Nani is a uh, Cape Verdean uh, Portuguese, and uh, he's currently playing for a club in Australia. And uh, Ricardo Quaresmo, I think, uh, has been playing for a smaller club in, Port in Portugal. I'm not sure if he's still playing at the moment. And then in Recognize Me, we will be bringing the picture up on the screen. Do head over to our Twitter page, The Nemo Star, and tell us who you think this is. I think that's quite easy. Uh, we do give you clues and we are very generous with our clues rob walker it has been an absolute pleasure uh i don't know i have no words i'm speechless which uh, rarely happens should i say ha. uh but thank you for your energy thank your enthusiasm you. and for your love uh for us it's in been, uganda uh, land, please, yeah. um, I, I hope we uh personally get another chance to to meet with you
hopefully in Budapest for the World Athletics yeah, Championship. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually plan to go to Budapest to watch Joshua Cheptege win that 10,000 meter gold. Kipling, I might have something to say about that. <laughs> sure. One and two. And with yeah. that, we will be taking a short break, but we also have uh, a lady who will be here talking about the Afro basket, uh, Madame Veronica. Uh, Victoria, Victoria Entali, uh, who is an uh, administrator. She'll be telling us more about that.